All right, shooter clear on the stages. Clear on the rules. Clear on the rules, clear on the stages. Shooter ready? Ready. Stand by. Hey folks, Dave here, and welcome back to the Backyard Battlefield. This is my real world firearm series, and today I'm gonna walk you guys through my first three gun competition. It's a pretty fun story because again, this was my first competition, and there's definitely a bit of uh, Murphy's Law involved. We had a ton of stuff go wrong trying to get to this competition, and uh, just say that, yeah, I've done one now. So I'm gonna walk you guys through some of those things that went wrong and how the actual competition went, including a full GoPro run of the competition itself. So I hope you guys enjoyed the story. Let's go ahead and dive in. Even though I had never competed in a three gun competition before, I found out about one that was within driving distance and had some reasonable entry fees. And even though I only had about three weeks before the actual event, I said, you know what? I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go all in and just do this as a baseline to see how I do and get a score to improve on for next time because I do wanna do more of these competitions. So first things first, what is three gun? Well, generally, it involves three firearms, as the name implies, although the actual stages that you're running can be very, very different depending on the venue where you're competing. In general, though, the firearms are pretty standard. You have your pistol, as you might expect. This is the one that I ran for the competition because, as you'll find out, so many things went wrong. This is actually the first handgun that I ever purchased, and it's a classic M1911. This one, though, is an A1 Tactical by Rock Island Armory. So it does have quite a few modern upgrades like an ambidextrous safety and a competition hammer, which is rounded off on the back there, along with the extended beaver tail. The sights, though, are pretty old school, just some uh, slightly larger Novak-style sights. Uh, still very, very basic iron sights, though. For my shotgun, this is where some of you guys that have more experience with three gun are gonna kinda laugh at me here. This is my only full size 12 gauge shotgun. This is a Ohio State Patrol Remington 870 pump action shotgun. As you guys can see, I've swapped off the uh, very well beaten state police furniture, the uh, plastic furniture. I found some of this really fantastic walnut 870 furniture, and I think it was uh, a week before the competition, I installed it on there with no way to test before I actually had to compete with it. So uh, yeah, guys, don't do that. Don't swap furniture on a older shotgun right before you actually have to use it. Maintaining these 870s isn't too complicated, but from what I could tell, no one had taken off this forearm on this shotgun since it was originally issued to the state police. Uh, the end cap and the arm itself were rusted into the furniture, and it was an absolute nightmare to get off. I think it was like a, a five hour soak in penetrating oil before I was able to basically just manhandle the forearm off and get this furniture installed. But yeah, didn't leave a whole lot of time for testing before the actual competition. By which I mean, there was no testing. I just hoped it worked. And for the rifle, I used one of my original AR-15s. This was originally a uh, very standard DPMS Oracle. This was my first AR, as you guys can see. It's had uh, quite a few upgrades since then. It has all Magpul furniture on it now, as well as a Vortex Strike Fire Red Dot. But it's always been super, super reliable. I know that DPMS used to have a pretty spotty reputation, but this rifle has been, uh, no pun intended, bulletproof for me. And it's just so reliable that I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go back to my original for this competition. Uh, again though, with my limited time to prepare for this competition, I had installed a VG6 muzzle brake here on it and still hadn't gotten out to the range to test it. I had no idea how it was gonna perform or even if I had installed it correctly. You guys had seen on a previous Backyard Battlefield video that this year I've had a really hard time scheduling range time and actually getting out to the range. And uh, going into this competition, I've got a bunch of firearms I've been modifying all year without being able to try them out and make sure that they function correctly. So 
you know, again, don't do what I do, guys, and just uh, run out there and dive in. Uh, try to get some practice in at least. Going into this competition, it had been uh, over six months since I'd been to the range. That's not a huge deal uh, for some parts of it, like for rifle and shotgun. I've always been uh, pretty good at both of those. Pistol, on the other hand, I really have to practice that on a regular basis to maintain my skill set. Uh, pistol has always been a challenge for me, perhaps because I started off with that 45 caliber and learned some, uh, some bad habits. I'm not a huge guy. That 45 definitely taught me some flinch when I was first getting started. So in a perfect world, I really would have liked to go out, get some more practice in, and really be prepared for this event, but that wasn't possible. Thankfully though, I was able to go to an indoor range literally two days before the actual three gun competition where I was able to confirm that uh, at least for the rifle, everything was zeroed correctly, the muzzle brake was working great. I was uh, actually really, really impressed by that muzzle brake. This is where things really took a Murphy's Law left turn. Two days before the competition, I was there at the range shooting with my CZ-75. That's one of my all-time favorite pistols, and it's one of the ones I'm most accurate with. It's a full-size 75B with a factory-installed Omega trigger. It's awesome. What's not so awesome is the install job that my gunsmith had done on my night sights. It is one of my carry guns, and I think probably four years ago now, I had a gunsmith install some tritium actual glowing green night sights. From what I can tell, my gunsmith had done the cheapest and easiest installation method for these front sights, which as you might imagine, is the incorrect way. There is a pin that holds that front sight into place, and from what I can tell, because you have to drill a hole for that pin on the new front sight, my gunsmith installed the sight and just said, ah, it'll be fine, and just threw some Loctite on it and never drilled the hole for the pin. That sight was slowly working its way loose. All of a sudden, my accuracy, which had been looking pretty good, went completely almost off paper on the target. I fired one more shot and then realized that my front sight was gone. Again, from what I can tell, there was no pin holding that front sight on at all. So the Loctite worked its way out and the front sight just launched downrange, never to be seen again. Two days before my first three gun. Perfect. After a few desperate phone calls, I realized that no gunsmith was going to have a CZ-75 front sight available in town in order to get this ready to go for the competition. So, in desperation, I went back again to my original 45. This is the gun that I started shooting on, and being a 1911, it does have a fantastic single action trigger. But remember guys, three gun is a timed competition. This thing holds eight rounds, and I've got a bunch of pistol targets to take care of. This is also my first competition. I didn't even have enough magazines to meet the limit of rounds for the competition. I believe it was, uh, it was 28 rounds is what you were able to load up for both your pistol and your magazines. I didn't have enough magazines to meet that. Thankfully though, at the range, one of the range officers running the event did have a spare 1911 magazine, and so I was able to just barely meet that minimum round count for the competition. Unfortunately though, I was going to have to be really, really good with my reloads. In 3-Gun, your accuracy is almost less important than your time. Accuracy is important, but getting a lower time is really, really key which is why a lot of people run a semi-auto shotgun with a large magazine capacity. And while my state police shotgun has a nice, huge magazine tube here with plenty of rounds for the competition itself, it is still pump action, which actually does cost you time. It's hard to imagine uh, if you haven't done this before, like I hadn't, but seconds really do count. You gotta be accurate, you gotta have controlled breathing, and you gotta have firearms that can keep up the pace. A pump action shotgun, generally not what you would choose. Well, let's go ahead and dive into a guided tour of the stages thanks to our range officer. And we're going to kick things off here in the starters box where you get going at the sound of the shot counter. The stages do go in order, first rifle, then shotgun, and finally pistol. At the rifle stage, you're going to have your rifle in the barrel with 20 rounds in a magazine and no round in the chamber. You're going to have to remove your rifle and charge it up. You then have those 20 rounds to hit 14 targets. 
If you shoot the arms holding up the steel circle targets, that's going to count as a penalty because it's going to knock the target off of the stand. That's considered a dead target. Once you're either out of ammo or you've hit all 14 targets, you're going to clear any ammo out of the rifle and put it back into the barrel. From there, you're going to make your way to the shotgun stage where you're going to have 7 plus 1 in the shotgun. That is 7 rounds in the magazine tube and 1 in the chamber. You're also allowed to have up to two additional rounds just in case, but there are only eight targets. So in theory, if you hit every target, you shouldn't have to reload at all. The shotgun stage is divided into two parts with pop-up steel targets. There are two firing boxes and you can only fire while inside of those boxes. You've got three targets up first, then you have to move to the second firing box where you can hit those last five targets. Once all the targets are down, you're going to clear the shotgun and put it into the last barrel. A note here that putting any hot weapons into the barrel also counts as a penalty and possibly a disqualification depending on the circumstances. Once you get to the pistol stage, you cannot draw until you're completely inside of the firing square. First up is going to be a dueling tree target. This is a steel target that flips back and forth. If you shoot one of these flippers twice, that also counts as a dead target and is a penalty. So once you've struck one of these targets, you really want to make sure that you don't accidentally hit it twice. Additionally, any white targets remaining that haven't been hit are also going to be a penalty. And if you hit the target hard enough that you flip it and then it bounces right back, that still is a active target and you have to hit it once again. This comes into play if you're hitting it right on the edge of the target, or in my case, if you're smacking it with a full-sized 45 ACP round. That's definitely going to come back to haunt me. I didn't get an exact measurement of these targets, but they are very, very small. Because we're only carrying 28 rounds for all of the pistol targets, they suggested that if we get stuck there, just go ahead and leave some of those targets, take the penalty, and save your ammo for this final target right here. These flippers are much larger targets. One more key thing to remember is you also can't reload on the move between the two pistol firing boxes. You have to leave any mag changes until you get into that second firing box. Also, one final note, we did get two complete runs of the course, and we were allowed to use our best time of the two. And here we go, guys. It's finally time to roll that footage of both of my runs of this competition. I'm going to interrupt myself occasionally with a few notes about my performance and some things I can improve on, and for you guys that have more experience with these three-gun competitions, feel free to leave me some advice along the way as well. It would be greatly appreciated, because I can't wait to run one of these again. All right, shooter clear on the stages. Clear on the rules. Clear on the rules, clear on the stages. Shooter ready? Ready. Stand by. As you guys can see from the little bit of shaking there on the red dot, something that I was just not prepared for was the massive adrenaline rush that started as soon as that shot timer went off. Just knowing that I was, uh, under the gun, as it were, was just a huge rush, and I really had to focus to control my breathing and focus on uh, my trigger pulls here. Controlling that adrenaline rush is going to be a factor throughout the entire competition here. Got just a little too eager there on the last one and only clipped the right side of the target, not enough to knock it down. And this is where some additional practice would have also come in handy. It took me a few seconds to realize that my forearm was locked a little bit to the rear, preventing me from adding new shells to the magazine until I realized what was going on. As you guys can tell from my accuracy and my hand shaking here, the adrenaline rush is really, really going at this point. 
plus some heavier breathing from jogging back and forth. So I'm going to actually point out a couple of things going on here. You're going to see me adjust my stance uh, multiple times. I started out here with an isosceles triangle stance, which in the past has worked pretty well for me, but it was just not working out today. I then swapped to a modified weaver with my strong arm uh, pretty straight there, and that actually worked a lot better for me. Have I hit that top left yet? Nope. No swing. You guys are also going to notice a couple of these targets are getting hit so hard on the outer edge that they're bouncing back and I'm having to shoot them again. A definite downside of these large 45 ACP rounds. There you go. <clears throat> hey, Weaver appears to be my friend. I also had no single stack magazine carriers that would fit the 1911 magazine, so they were all just in my back pocket and I didn't realize that because I was wearing gloves, it would be really hard to fish them out of my back pocket and get them lined up for the reloads. Again here, besides adjusting my stance a couple of times, I'm really jerking the trigger hard. It's a bit of a flinch going on on top of trying to control all that adrenaline rush, but with a couple of deep breaths and some additional focus, these targets go down quite quickly actually. Down. Well, hammer down. Hammer down. There you go. Say, oh, you can't, can't. say so you're at holster <laughs> up. All right, range is safe. Shooter ready. All set. Stand by. Push it left. Here for the second stage, my stance on the rifle is a little bit off and I get a little too eager and end up with one target left and all of my rounds gone. The shotgun, however, is going to go much smoother. Still though, the hardest part for me is dealing with the huge adrenaline rush and being just a bit out of breath. Making myself slow down, focus on my sight picture, and pull the trigger slowly and smoothly is going to be the key to getting some hits here. <laughs> that wanted to swing. Do one more for the top. There you go. We'll see how it goes. Oh, that yeah, we're gonna Good give up on that. Show clear, clear, camera forward, holster up. Range is safe. You're done, sir. Thank you. Yeah, did you save the full 40 seconds off your time? <laughs> I think I hit that top one two or three times and was just not. I know you were the, the pole. Pole? Okay. Yeah, you were nailing the pole. That was the uh, the bottom one that you kept just nicking, just not enough to get it to swing. I kept hearing a ping, but I couldn't see it. Yeah, you were yep. nicking the very edge. <laughs> the very edge. <laughs> so it went, whoop. 
<laughs> I'm glad I stopped then. Yeah. <laughs> so again, guys, I think some practice would have done me good, but overall, I was pretty happy with how that went, especially because I was able to use my muscle memory to draw the 1911 and also remember to disengage the safety, which is good because I do carry handguns that have manual safeties, and I've always wondered if that safety disengagement would be muscle memory for me. And it looks like the answer is, thankfully, yes. So guys, there you have it. That is my first three gun competition. Again, it's not going to be my last. It was so much fun despite how much went wrong on the lead up to it. And I can't wait to try again and uh, see a different course and see how I would do with a bit more practice and a bit more time to prepare. For now, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for future episodes of The Backyard Battlefield.